Tom Baird. Good morning, Tom. <laughs> good morning, Baird. Good morning, United States Senator Joe Donnelly. How are you today? Good morning. Thanks for having me with you today. Hey, thank you very much for joining us. Let's start right in, uh, right in, you know, the people in the heartland <laughs> like us, you know, kind of looking around, see what's going on in Washington, D.C., and the word that comes to mind is turmoil. I think that's appropriate. <laughs> We're in a, yeah, it, it's, it's a situation that you look at, and, uh, um, you know, a, a special prosecutor is appointed for a reason, that there's concern that uh, our government was, uh, our election was, um, compromised by the Russians, um, and that they are uh, involved and have had contacts with uh, folks who are involved in our government. And and you look and you go, um, that's almost unthinkable, but that's what we have to make sure that we protect our country. My first and foremost obligation is to protect our nation and our people. Senator, what what is your average Hoosier to think about all of this? Well, what what I um, try to do, too, is, is be reflective of that, which is put my head down and go to work every day, strengthen our country, make sure there's more jobs, more opportunities, so that, you know, uh, a young couple in Fulton you know, knows that they're going to have a great chance to buy a house, to, to run the farm, or to get a good job. And our future as a country, I think, is as brighter, brighter than it's ever been. Um, but we're in a position where it is... Uh, it is uh, there's significant concern that folks involved in our government had contacts with the Russians and that there was uh, um, interference in, in running our country. Senator, the, my worry is not what a lot of people are talking about. I keep hearing this word impeachment, and I just I don't see that happening. Uh, but my worry is that every day we hear more people in the top levels of our government, both in the White House and now, in the leadership of the House. They've been saying, we didn't know anything about this, we didn't know anything about this, and suddenly the Washington Post or the New York Times comes up with a recording of them have a conversation laughing about it. Is there anybody in the top levels of my government who is not going to end up under the umbrella of this special counsel who is looking at things, all things Russian, basically, over the last year and a half? Well, as you as you look at, uh, for instance, the people who are uh, in charge of the Senate Intelligence Committee, very uh, good friends of mine, Richard Burr um, and Mark Warner. They are um, they're exceptional senators who are dedicated to their states and dedicated to our country. And uh, you, you know, I have I have trust in their judgment. I know they're working together because I talk to I talk to them on on uh, on a constant basis and uh, and extensively about these very subjects. And I I know my colleagues in the Senate, um, most all of them are focused on one thing, and that is. Uh, protecting our country. That's our job, and that's what we're going to do. Senator, the president's foreign trip begins today. How do you see that? Is that going to help us as a country? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not certain, Tom. What I'm hoping is that um, as the president travels, that uh, what you always hope with those kind of trips is that it strengthens relationships and uh, uh, makes things better for our country. But uh, we, we certainly have challenges here at home that may affect that trip. How about our relationship with Israel, sir? You know, I take a deep breath that you probably <laughs> heard. And uh, <laughs> when I was younger, nobody could hear it. Now I wheeze like that. <laughs> that's, that's, the way, that's the way it is with all of us. <laughs> Don't you wish you um, had stock and tums? <laughs> I do. <laughs> what um, What I'm concerned, our relationship with Israel is, is as strong or stronger than it's ever been in history, especially military to military and um uh, national security agencies to national security agencies, like the CIA to the Mossad. We have very close relationships. I've met with the Mossad just a few years ago. Um, it, they've never been better. But here's here's what just happened this week, is that the information um, that the president gave to the uh, Russian ambassador, who, by the way, the Russian ambassador is not just, he, he's a, uh, like if he was a ball player, you'd say he plays a lot of positions. Um He's not only the Russian ambassador, he's also a member of the Russian intelligence agency, the KGB uh -huh. successor, the FSB. So he's, a, uh, he's basically a KGB agent who is also their ambassador. And he was in the Oval Office, and the president, unfortunately, gave him information that detailed um, uh, very, very secret information that Israel gave to us and said, please do not share this with anybody else. We are worried about uh, the potential effect that, that our agent, our person on the ground, their life might be in danger. 
um, if you give this information to somebody else, because once you get it, uh, not to get too technical, I apologize, once you get it, you can kind of figure out who it is, if you know what I mean, because right. they said it's from this city, um, and it was about this subject, and so then they know. And so um, Israel is um, a little annoyed, I think, at this point, and, and I expect that we'll be able to get through that without a problem. But we just have to be very, very, very careful with these because it's, it truly is lives on the line when that information gets out. Senator, uh, a lot of this stems, you tell me if I'm wrong, but it just seems like a lot of this, because once we get into all this investigation stuff and we're talking about the stuff with Israel and the Russians and the White House and everything, it just seems like there's a, a huge amount of misinformation out there. And when the facts do come out, they're called fake facts. And are we going to have to, or you or whoever going to have to start saying, look, you got to deal with reality here. You can't believe what you read on the internet because we're where we're at well, because of that kind of an outlook and mindset. The whole purpose of the uh, special counsel is to simply follow the facts wherever they go. And, and that is what Robert Mueller will do. He's an extraordinary individual. He was, uh, if you want to know the character and, and, and Tom, you and I know, you and I know, uh, folks like this. He was a uh, platoon leader in Vietnam. He, he went over in infantry, led his platoon there, um, graduated from Princeton and then went to Vietnam as a platoon leader. He's extraordinary. He loves his country. He's going to work hard. And this will go wherever the facts go. And if there's nothing there, he'll say there's nothing there. And if there is, he'll make it right. And so I have confidence in him. And, um, you know, our job, my job, is to try to make sure that we continue to, to uh, build those kind of things that can help the American dream come true so that families um, around Indiana can know that the kids are in great schools, that uh, everything is moving forward, that their lives are going to be, um, that they can look two, three, four years ahead and know there's stability and that their job is safe and that they can, you know, buy a new home and have an awesome time. Senator, I know we've only got a limited amount of time because you've got a very busy day and we appreciate the conversation, but I do want to bring it back a little closer to home. The Peru VA clinic had some, uh, shall we say, bad uh, stories coming out about it. And uh, where are we with that? Well, the investigation is going on right now. Okay. And, uh, the Peru VA clinic is a, is a good clinic that takes care of our veterans every single day. And they had some bad actions happen there. Um, we're trying to make sure that uh, every bit of it, it was investigated. Appropriate actions are being taken so that it doesn't happen again. Um, it's really discouraging when you see that. But I don't want any of our vets not to go there um, with an appointment because the people there that work there are dedicated. And if one or two uh, does some stuff that clearly they're not supposed to do, um, what you can do is ferret it out, get it taken care of, and make sure our vets get quality care. Senator, you'll be happy to know that I'm going to have two appointments at that clinic within the next month. So at least one veteran's going to go. However, I will tell you... (laughs) That I am in complete agreement with my VSO in Miami County, who said in the Peru Tribune, plainly, you give me another doctor and an office manager, and I end these problems. This is about scheduling and people who are so overloaded that they start taking shortcuts. And you sent me a press release saying we were 4,000 people short in the VA, and we're worried about uh, the administration uh, not hiring people. So what's your comment on that? We have thousands of positions that are open and that are not being filled. And so we've contacted the, uh, the VA, we've contacted the administration, and said we have crying needs, we have thousands of positions that are open. These are not like new positions that are being created to make work or whatever. These are frontline positions that are open. And as you said, you put the right people in the right places, and uh, this is the best care in the world. Senator, what's on the table for you today? Well, I'm going to be working on a number of issues. Um, that we, we had that special uh, meeting yesterday with the uh, Deputy Attorney General late in the afternoon. And then I'm um, heading home to Indiana today as well. Um, we'll be home all weekend back in Indiana. By the way, Senator, I wanted to uh, thank you because you've been a great lead-in this morning for the Dick Belcher program that comes up next. Well, I appreciate it. I hope that I didn't. I hope I hope I didn't kill his rating. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't want to let you go without talking about a major accomplishment you had this week. You got the mental health bill for our police officers and first responders. You got a unanimous vote for that in the Senate. I think that's a pretty good accomplishment. So excited! It. Uh, I, I know you're short on time too. 
What it does um, is it helps to provide a crisis hotline for our officers that are docks in places like Rochester and, and Akron and elsewhere can get training on special needs of police officers and peer mentoring programs so that they can work and help one another. And the whole idea is that our officers see things that are, are almost unimaginable, and we want to be there to back them up. Yes, they do. And uh, so congratulations. Does, does that go to the House now? It does. Things okay. look really good uh, on the House side. We think the president will be signing this into law. Excellent. Excellent. Senator, as always, we certainly appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much. Oh, it's my privilege. Thanks. Thank you. Good to talk with you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. United States Senator from the great state of Indiana, Joe Donnelly, and a uh, busy day coming up for him, but we appreciate him sharing a bit of time with us this morning. Yeah, and just, I, I'm not carrying anybody's water, but for that entire interview, it never sounded like he wanted to talk about the craziness. He didn't want to right. make anybody eat crow. He didn't want to say, you know, do a Tarzan yell and say, look at me, we're better than this. He would much rather be working on policy. <laughs> he would much rather be dealing with anything else besides this. Well, you know, like Senator Donnelly, don't like Senator Donnelly, but one of the things that came out about him this week, I think it was this week or late last week, was the bipartisanship that he shows as a United States senator. Right. Wasn't he voted like the second uh, least uh, partisan yeah. member of Congress? Yeah, and even when we did talk about the stuff that's going on, the first place he went to was the bipartisan chairs. Of exactly. That, or chair and, exactly, uh, who he gets along with, who he yeah. respects, who he talks with. So, yeah, he's you know he tries to do the job. Right, and, and he has always said, you know, my emphasis is on the citizens of the state of Indiana. Yeah. And, uh, you know, politics has to take a second seat to that. And I should, I, I should think we all ought to be happy that we're not seeing him every night on a TV show yelling. <laughs> Like some other people like some, are doing, some, yes. Like some of the other Democrats are, right? <laughs> and even some of the Republicans now. Yeah. We're about seven, eight minutes away from the first federal savings bank program coming up here on WROI.